I've been wanting to make this video forever and I'm super excited to share it with you because I finally did it. Today we are talking about TikTok recipe hacks and these are some good ones, so let's get right into it. Today's video is sponsored by Scentbird. I have been working with them for a long time here on my channel because I absolutely love their products. Have you ever bought like a full bottle of perfume and found like after a couple weeks that you aren't sure if you like the scent anymore and now you're stuck with this whole bottle of perfume? Well, Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service and it lets you try new designer fragrances for just $17 a month. With each fragrance, you get a 30 day supply to try it out and they come in these fun little vials. So basically you slip them in the plastic cover. You can lock, I would always do this when I put them in my travel bag, and then you can unlock to spritz. They have a lot of perfumes and colognes and also a lot of unisex fragrances too. Um, you can actually go on their site and take a quiz to find out what fragrances might be best for you. This one is actually one of my favorites that I got this month. It is Confessions of a Rebel get a room and order champagne. And this one has notes of raspberry, mandarin, and jasmine. It smells delightful. I also got this one, which is Mind Games. This one has notes of passion fruit, tonka bean, and freesia. It smells delicious as well. The other one I wanted to share with you guys, this one is Celestial Patchouli. It has notes of patchouli, cedarwood, and cinnamon bark. One tip that you might not know about fragrances is they actually work best if you have moisturized skin because the fragrance will stick to your skin that way and it will last a lot longer. So if you guys wanna discover your new signature scent, I highly, highly recommend Scentbird. It is such an awesome idea for a subscription service, especially for someone like me who loves to always try new fragrances. I'll have a QR code on the screen right here so you can scan that with your phone, or there will also be a link in the description box below. Use my promo code JEN55OFF. That's gonna give you 55% off your first month. Yes, I said 55%. That's actually only about $8 for your first month. So highly encourage you to try out Scentbird. Once again, the link will be in the description box below. And use code JEN55OFF for 55% off your first month. I know you guys are gonna love it. All right, so we are gonna make the viral TikTok ramen. So I'm trying a different brand of ramen that I've never had before. Um, supposedly this one is good, but it is spicy. Some versions of this recipe actually call to add chili crisp oil to it. I'm not gonna do that because I heard this is spicy to begin with, so we're gonna start with that. I've also got one egg, some Kewpie mayo, which I purchased for this video. I've never purchased it before, and uh, it's quite good. I have some cloves of garlic, and we're actually gonna chop them using this little uh, food chopper. Um, I also have some green onion that I'm gonna garnish with, and then, I have two and a third cups of water, which is what the back of the ramen packet calls for. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the stove and bring it to a boil. All right, so I'm gonna start out by putting my egg into my bowl here. And then I don't, I probably just need one clove of garlic, but I also am going to use this garlic for some other recipes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chop up the whole bunch. Okay, as someone who absolutely hates mincing garlic, this is my new <laughs> favorite tool. So I don't want it to be too overpowering, so I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. And then we're supposed to remove the seasoning packets and stir those in with the egg and the garlic. And then about a tablespoon of the QP mayo. And then mix this all together. So the idea with this particular recipe is that it's going to create kind of like a richer, creamier broth than if you just use the ingredients in the packet. Um, so as soon as my water starts boiling, I'm gonna add my noodles to there, boil them for probably about four minutes, and then we'll assemble everything together. I also, I really like to garnish my um, ramen with green onions or cilantro. I like, I know cilantro is probably kind of weird to some people, but I do like to garnish my uh, ramen with that sometimes as well. 
And you could do like um, a soft boiled egg or like a runny egg on top of here. I am a weird person and I don't care for runny eggs, but um, if I had hard boiled eggs on hand, I'd probably add one of those. I went ahead and cooked my noodles. What you are supposed to do is slowly whisk the hot water into the egg mixture to kind of cook it a little bit. I'm just nervous that it's gonna make scrambled eggs, but I guess we'll see. Actually, it didn't, okay. Okay, Tech Talk, I see you. I feel like that seems like a lot of water, but we'll taste it. I'm sure it's flavorful enough. Um, I like to let this sit for a little bit just to make sure it cools down. It's too hot to eat right now. All right, so this has had a chance to cool down some. I don't have a proper ramen spoon. I need to get one. I'm gonna try the broth. Yeah, that's good. I would say that is a spicy ramen though. I mean, I like spicy stuff, so it's not gonna bother me. But one of the ramens that I really like, if you don't like spicy, is the Nissin Tonkatsu ramen. It has really good flavor, so I actually need to get, need to get some of that and try it with this particular recipe, but let's try the noodles. That's good. I definitely recommend that. Have you guys seen also the recipe where they use like a slice of American cheese in the ramen? I think I wanna try that next. So yeah, TikTok hack, boom ramen i'm gonna go eat this okay so this next one isn't new but i wanted to try it anyway this is a salmon and rice bowl that was popularized by emily mariko on tiktok during the covid lockdown i am going to use i think about a cup and a half of rice so i'm gonna go ahead and put it in here and then i just like to wash my rice so that it's not so sticky and gummy when i cook it but this colander is awesome because you just drain the water right out of there until it's mostly clear. So I added two cups of water to my rice cooker and then all you have to do is put the lid on. This has several different settings. You can do rice, porridge, uh, soup, or keep warm. I was thinking the uh, keep warm function would be good like if you wanted to do some type of like a hot dip in here that would be really great to hold that without burning it so put the lid on just gonna let this go until it's fully cooked so to go with the rice we're gonna make some salmon i'm just gonna drizzle some avocado oil in there not too much and then i'm gonna preheat this to about medium high okay so i got this salmon at the grocery store and i'm just gonna season this very simply so typically i try to keep the seasoning pretty neutral so i'm just gonna use this um, Alpine Touch seasoning blend. It's just basically got salt, um, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. This is already skinless, so I like that too. Okay, so this should be pretty good to go. So I'll go ahead and add our salmon. The original recipe was actually made using leftover rice and leftover salmon, but I actually wanted to have it just as a regular meal, so I'm trying it this way. I did sear the salmon on both sides, and then I'm also thinly slicing some cucumber so I can make a little bit of a cucumber salad. I just seasoned the cucumbers with a little bit of salt and pepper after I sliced them thinly, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of rice vinegar as well. Okay, so our rice is done. I'm gonna toss it with just a little bit of rice vinegar and some salt. I've been loving using a rice cooker to cook my rice and I actually liked it so much that I bought a larger one. So I'll link that one down below. Okay, so you can see how delicious this salmon turned out. Okay, so we've got our rice, salmon. Obviously this was originally meant to be making as leftover, made as leftovers but I am wanted to eat it right now, so we're just putting everything hot together. Okay, I'm gonna add my cucumbers, cupy mayo, and then some sriracha. Okay, and then I could not find in my grocery store the little um, nori papers, so we're just gonna cut this. And that is it. Looks delicious. I'm not like a huge fan of the nori um, paper. So, I mean, I like it in sushi, but to eat it like this, I'm not sure. If I don't care for it, then 
I'll just eat the bowl itself. Okay, so yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan of the nori. Um, I also I'm gonna add some green onions because I think I saw that in one of the recipes, and I feel it's it's gonna make it taste better. That's definitely good. Really good. I recommend this. What's the only thing better than Big Macs? Big Mac tacos. Okay. Have you guys seen this? I've seen it on social media for a while and I've been wanting to make it. So I've got some lean ground beef. Uh, if you've never seen this recipe before, basically you smash some beef onto a tortilla and then you kind of crisp it on both sides. So I went ahead and got a really lean ground beef. This is 93.7 because I don't want it to be too, too greasy. We need some American cheese, some tortillas. I went ahead and got the street taco size because I thought they were super cute. Some pickles, you could also put onion on it if you wanted to. I don't really care for onion, so, or like raw onion. And then this is our Big Mac sauce. So in here I've got mayo, ketchup, sweet relish, yellow mustard, white vinegar, sugar, paprika, garlic powder, and onion powder. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stir this together. Okay, and then this is gonna be the sauce. Actually, it's pretty dang close. I forgot, lettuce. I'm like salvaging this little tiny piece of iceberg. I'm gonna shred this up. I think this has, this lettuce has seen better days, but we're gonna revive it in some cold water. Okay, I'm gonna put this in my salad spinner and soak this in some cold water. I'm gonna go ahead and start out with three of these tortillas and you're just supposed to take like a little ball and smash it down on the tortilla in a very thin layer, like almost to the edge if you can. And then you can't forget the seasoning, so I'm just gonna season these with like an all-purpose seasoning. This one is Alpine seasoning. It has like garlic, salt, pepper, onion powder, and I'm gonna preheat my skillet. Okay, so I've just got like a tiny little bit of oil in here. And I think I can only fit two at once. So I put those on one side until they're done. So I thought everything was going really well with this recipe until I flipped these over. And I'm gonna tell you right now what went wrong and how I fixed it. Okay, so this, this has been a fail. So um, as you can see, the tortilla is very like soggy. The beef shrank up a lot and basically it burned so um we're gonna start over so how i went about it this time was i actually cooked the tortillas and the beef patties separately this way i could make sure that they were cooked on both sides and the tortilla didn't get soggy okay so basically i cooked the tortillas and the burgers separate because it did not work <laughs> together so i'm gonna go ahead and add some lettuce let me know if you guys have tried this and if it worked for you um, and then I'm gonna drizzle some sauce on there. We're gonna add some pickles. The only thing is, I feel like these are like hard to eat, you know? I mean, it's good. I do like Big Macs, so I mean, I like the flavors of it. So if you have gotten these to work without it being weird, let me know. Um, would I make this again? Probably not. I probably just make it on a bun or like a bowl, a burger in a bowl. Definitely worth a shot though. That sauce is really good. I'll link the recipe down below. So next up we're making this really delicious cinnamon roll recipe where you basically doctor up a can of store-bought cinnamon rolls. So I'm using Grand's. Um, these are very large, so they only come five to a package, but I'm just gonna go ahead and space them out in this dish. This is a little bit smaller than a nine by 13. And if I didn't mention this before, I'll link all these recipes down below, but you take some heavy cream and pour it over the cinnamon rolls and down into the bottom of the baking dish. And then you take some melted butter and mix it together with some brown sugar and a little bit of cinnamon. And then this is just kind of a little bit of extra cinnamon drizzle flavor that's gonna go evenly over the top of the cinnamon rolls. Uh, this is 100% a very decadent recipe. 
obviously with all of the butter and sugar and cream and you'll see the frosting <laughs> later but after that you can go ahead and put the foil on it and bake this in the oven per the recipe directions this is what it looked like when it came out of the oven these cinnamon rolls are not dry at all if you've ever made them before and they're dry on top these are not that way they are really soft and moist throughout so for the cream cheese frosting i'm just mixing up a little bit of softened cream cheese with a little bit of melted butter adding some powdered sugar to that so basically just a kind of a regular cream cheese frosting but then you go ahead and add the cup of frosting that the tube of biscuits um, or the tube of cinnamon rolls came with and then just whisk that all together and then go ahead and pour it over the warm cinnamon rolls i think this would be a really delicious holiday dinner um, holiday dinner, holiday brunch or breakfast. I think if you were doing like an Easter brunch or I know Mother's Day is coming up. So if you're doing a Mother's Day brunch, um, you could even do it with the smaller cinnamon rolls as well. You do have to eat these with a fork and knife since they're so soft, um, but really encourage you guys to try this recipe. It's delicious. Let's try this. It's got a bajillion calories. Now that is how you make a canned cinnamon roll. That is good. Mmm. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. You have to try this recipe. Next up, we are making the viral grinder salad. Now I've seen this made in a couple of different ways. Sometimes it's made just as a salad. Sometimes I've even seen people eat it with chips. And then I've also seen it on a sandwich, like a chopped salad on a sandwich. So the first thing is to put together the dressing. This is like a creamy mayo dressing, but it also has red wine vinegar in it. Um, I also added some fresh cracked black pepper. Again, I will link this recipe down below. My vision for this recipe was to try and use this chopper that I had recently obtained. However, I can't recommend this chopper. It's It doesn't work at all. <laughs> it barely worked for the things I was trying to use it for, but I did get a new chopper and you guys will be seeing that in an upcoming video. It's an OXO brand, so I'll link it down below. I got it on Amazon, of course, but basically you just chop everything really small. You can use either a knife or a chopper like I have and then add it all to a bowl. So we've got like different kinds of lettuce in there. I'm adding some pepperoncini, whatever kind of deli meats you want. I added ham and salami. You could add pepperoni, turkey, bacon if you wanted to. Um, I added some tomatoes. Olives would be really good in this. I didn't have any. Um, and then you just mix the dressing with the salad and it was delicious. If you guys are doing low carb, this is definitely a great lunch idea. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching today's TikTok hacks video. Also, don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Scentbird. I'll have all the information in the description box below. Remember, you can get your first month for just around $8. And let me know in the comments which one of these recipes that you would like to try. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!